Hello everyone, welcome to the Quest Mage, and welcome back to another No Man's Sky video for the Nintendo Switch. As no doubt most of you have seen, No Man's Sky has been updated to version 5.0, which is called World Part 1. And if you've been watching this channel, or owned the Nintendo Switch version of No Man's Sky for a long time, you will no doubt know that the updates for Nintendo Switch are usually delayed. Which means yesterday the update was available for other platforms and Nintendo Switch. I'm hoping we get that some point in the next few days. So whilst we are waiting for the update to land on Nintendo Switch, I thought we'd just go through the patch notes here and see what to expect. And also talk about some things that I think we might not get on Nintendo Switch. So let's go to the No Man's Sky website and check out the latest patch notes. And here we are, as we can see, World Part 1, introducing Update 5.0. I would have thought that would have been the other way around. Update 5.0, World Part 1. Anyway, as you can see there, Update 5.0 World transforms the universe into a richer, wilder, more varied and immersed place. Featuring huge leaps in water and cloud visuals, increasing planetary diversity, new gameplay features and more. Our journey continues. So a very good start there. A lot of things are changing in this update for No Man's Sky and I really do hope we see at least majority of these changes for the Nintendo Switch. Moving on down the page we can see here Big Hunt Expedition. The Liquidators engage in a galactic bug hunt in No Man's Sky's 14th that's right, we've had 14 expeditions. Crazy how time flies. Community Expedition. A vile brood is spreading corruption across the universe. Join the Liquidator Vanguard to do your part and purge the rot from the stars. This to me sounds really interesting because it sounds like a bit of a boss rush going on here. And we'll see later on that they've changed the way that health bars appear on screen for some of the, I guess we can call them boss type characters. So it'll be interesting to see with these characters if we had that I've been wanting new types of enemies for a while, especially boss type enemies or captain style enemies. Definitely looking forward to playing through this. And as expected, as we play through this expedition, we will get rewards. And the rewards, once again, look pretty good. Next, we can see here Discovery Renaming. Finally, this has been added. I've wanted this feature for a very long time. Let me know down in the comments, have you wanted this feature for a long time? I'm so, so happy to see that this has been added. Discovered Systems, Planets, Flora, Fauna and Minerals can now be renamed at any time, even after upload. This is great. I think this is a very welcome feature. Again, I've wanted this for a while and the reason is because usually I planet hop to find all the flora and fauna on each planet and not always do I stop and rename all the creatures. I just want to upload those creatures. So very, very happy that now I can go back and if I want to add any of those creatures as my pet, I can now rename it. Fantastic. Two thumbs up. And now we are going to get to some of the bigger features that Hello Games have added. Dramatic new worlds. Planets across the universe have been transformed in wild and radical ways. Gravitational distortions have warped some lush and tropical worlds, shaking loose floating islands that now drift in the atmosphere above the planet's surface. Hop from rock to rock with the jetpack or starship. Build bases in the sky, oh I intend to, or simply marvel at the dramatic waterfalls that cascade down from the sky. The planet they chose for those screenshots and trailers does seem to remind me quite a bit of Light No Fire, so an interesting choice there, but definitely looking forward to these floating islands. Little side note here, I uh, continue to think about this and I thought what will happen in the future if we get another reset and one of our bases are on top of those islands? Hmm, we might want to be careful if we actually do want to build bases on those islands because we've seen galaxy resets before and uh, it changes a lot of stuff, messes up some of our bases, so something to keep in mind for the future. Now I'm not going to read through every single paragraph in all of these patch notes because that would just take an inordinate amount of time. I'm just going to go a little bit quicker from here on out. New volumetric clouds have been added to the game. I really hope we get this on Nintendo Switch. I'm very interested not only in the looks of the clouds, but the atmosphere that this brings to the game, especially when we have the possibilities now of standing above a mountain, looking down and seeing that we are above the clouds. Really hope we get that on Switch. Customized solar ships. Now this is something I saw in the trailer. Very 
happy to see this. I really, really want to customize my solar ship because I want specific wings and specific sails and it takes an inordinate amount of time to find a ship that suited all those parameters. So excellent. Another two thumbs up from me. Well done, Hello Games. Moving on to detailed shadows. Might be something we might not see on Switch. Again, I don't know. This is just me thinking out loud and talking directly to you. So uh, shadows have new depth and realism added on, but I don't know if we will be getting this feature. Hopefully Hello Games can let us know. Usually they don't. Usually we have to wait for the update. So uh, it's going to be a wait and see. Now, high definition water. As it says here, seas, oceans, and lakes now ripple and sparkle with realistic wave formations and foam generation. Also bringing dramatic reflections and beautifully lit surface details. Now, when I saw this in the trailer, one, very happy to see it. I think it looks excellent. Something that the community has asked for for quite a long time. I think they've done very, very well to bring this to the game. This is my biggest worry for the Nintendo Switch version of No Man's Sky. I don't know how they've implemented these changes into the game, but potentially this could cause the Nintendo Switch version of No Man's Sky to run at a lower frame rate. So this does worry me if this is added. I hope it is, and I hope it's optimized. I hope it's just me worrying for nothing here, but I do think with specifically the water, we might see it completely be added to the Nintendo Switch and it works very well or potentially improves what we already have because again don't know how this is implemented number two they might implement it and it negatively affects the frame rate i hope that's not the one we get it could also be added but not to its full potential so we see some effects but just not all of them that would be a good uh, middle ground i would think and lastly obviously just could not be added at all and we just continue with the water we had before this is definitely the bit of this update that interests me the most technically speaking for the nintendo switch definitely going to keep my eye out to see what type of water effects we will have. Otherworldly life is next. Interesting terminology used here by Hello Games. Discover strange new creatures, great, all across the universe. Bizarre floral hybrids stalk some planets. Interesting sentence. Floral hybrids. Obviously, I think that's the example we're getting there on screen. It looks like they've taken the structure of a creature and just replaced it with some of the flora. I think this is a very good idea. I think this brings a lot of variety to the game. Very welcome change. Hopefully, they implement more of this going forward. Full wind simulation. Now, this is also another one of those things that will be interesting to see on the Nintendo Switch as their wind system seems to affect all the flora in the game. So again, we'll see how the Nintendo Switch handles potential more particle effects, plus all the movement on screen all at the same time. How's the frame rate going to handle that? I don't know, but it will be definitely interesting to see. Because as they say, it's not just wind, we're getting new weather effects. So it says rustle in the wind, rock and sway during storms, billowing, dust clouds, rain, snow and other environmental effects so it'll be interesting to see what type of effects we get on nintendo switch now here's the bit about the dynamic water i already spoke about this before again interesting to see if we get this at all or in which way shape or form we actually do get this on the switch version liquidator combat mech carve through the toughest enemies in a new heavy duty mech suit all those who do their part in the liquidator expedition will unlock these new combat focus components for the minor tour so what i take from this sentence is we are getting brand new rewards which is always a good thing i like that it keeps me playing the game keeps me interested definitely very good but it says liquidate a combat mech but then it actually makes me think that these are just skins that we can apply to the minotaur either which way happy to see it if you like playing with a minotaur in game this will be a very good change potential refresh for you I noticed that the patch notes separates into several sections about worlds. So we're here we're seeing sub-zero worlds which now have ice laden trees and glittering glacial rocks. Very good. It does actually look more like an ice world than it did before. Really looking forward to playing this sort of stuff on Switch. I do think that we were at a point where we needed a little bit of a refresh, even though I love the game the way it was before. These refreshes definitely breathe new life into the game and hopefully bring more interest from more people to play No Man's Sky for the first time. We can see here they've also done the same for Desert Worlds, which now it says the biodiversity of sandswept planets have been expanded with large feather fronded palms adorning the horizon of some worlds. Very nice change. I definitely like the idea of changing more of the fauna and having more variety there. 
As one of the things you'll notice in No Man's Sky after playing it for a few hours, you start to see the same things again and again and again. So any changes to that, definitely, definitely welcome. Next, we can see that the sky colors have now been changed. I would say again, because it seems like before the, what was it? I think it was the next update. We had much more variety in planetary colors, whether it be the water or the sky, at least in my opinion. And now it seems like Hello Games are going back to have a more science fiction look with more colors definitely like that. Another double thumbs up for this change. We're getting an insect armor set. That's great. That'll be from the expedition once again. Organic armor, it seems like it's being called. What do you guys think of this armor? I actually pretty much like it. I like the fact that you can change the helmets to different types of insects. That's really cool. Can't wait to see what that looks like. So to me, the most important thing we're getting out of this update for the Nintendo Switch specifically is this section here. Engine enhancements. And I will read through this one. Many underlying systems have been reworked for improved visuals and increased performance. Rendering of environmental objects such as trees, rocks and grass have now been moved to a GPU based system, allowing for denser worlds with increased performance. Planetary flora, minerals and curiosities have improved levels of detail from further distances and a broader range of angles. Terrain generation has been rewritten to incorporate dual marching cubes, voxel meshing, whatever that means, increasing loading speed, improving frame rate and saving memory. Now, condensing all of that simply, to me, it means the game is going to run better no matter which way you look at it. And they're moving a lot of the rendering to the graphics processor. Now, that's going to be very interesting and potentially game changing for the Nintendo Switch. Can the Nintendo Switch run this well? If it can, we might potentially see once again the Nintendo Switch version looking much better than what it does already. If we can get a graphical leap with these enhancements, this could be, like I said earlier, game changing. I cannot wait to see if this is brought to the Nintendo Switch. I really hope so. Next, a small little change, new interaction labels. I did notice this through some of the videos that I was watching. Labels for interactive and destructible objects in the universe have been restyled and made more responsive, providing critical information without obscuring the view. I think this is a very simple but very elegant change to the UI and very much needed. Not something that I noticed before, but now that I'm seeing what Hello Games have implemented, implemented, I am very much in favor of this update coming to all platforms. I think it does add an extra layer of helpfulness to the player in the game. Beetle diversity has now been added to the game. And as it says here, a wide variety of new insect-like creatures can now be discovered scuttling across the universe, with some of them being hostile, other ones being gentle and peaceful beings, which is really nice. Again, they're expanding on the discoverable things that we can find in the game. As we saw earlier, we have new trees, new environments, new types of clouds, new type of water. We're getting new creatures now. Brilliant. Excellent. More variety is definitely key. Dramatic Storms, another worry of mine for the Nintendo Switch version. Exploring a planet during a blizzard or thunderstorm is more exhilarating than ever. New ambient effects and atmospheric fog combined with wind responsive particle effects to create dramatic storms that sweep across the planet's surface. Another welcome change here to the game. I really hope we're getting this on Switch as well, but my worry here would be the particle effects, but again, they can just turn those off and hopefully have everything else. I'm really loving all the changes to this update. It's making monumental changes to the game and the way we experience it. And I think it's very, very welcome. So earlier in the video, I mentioned some of the walkers had brand new UI elements for their health. And here we are, we can see an example of that here with the walker battles. Walker battles are now framed by a detailed combat HUD, indicating the target vulnerabilities of these elite Sentinel units. And if we take a closer look at that, we can see it says Sentinel Walker, target leg and brain armor to expose control circuits. So it's actually giving us a hint on what to do as well. Great for brand new players. Then underneath it says brain cage, inner core and leg armor. I really like this change, something very small, but something with a big impact. Love it. And I really hope that this is applied to all the boss type characters in the game. The expedition also brings us a brand new flight pack, as we can see the Chitin flight pack here on screen. A new jetpack is also available, very different to all the other ones. Is that a new effect? Not sure. Can't remember if we already had that thruster effect in the game or not. Let me know down in the comments if we already had that or not, or is that new? 
We're also getting new variety of colors added to the water. So as we saw with the sky, the sky is changing and becoming more colorful. Here we're also getting the same thing as the water. The same thing applies to what I said earlier. It seems like Hello Games are going backwards in terms of making the game more colorful, which to me, very welcome. I hope we get that on Switch. Living buildings is a bit of a weird one because when I saw these creatures in the trailer, the last thing I thought were that they were moving or living buildings. I just thought that they were more robotic characters. But according to the patch notes, living buildings. Very rarely in sectors where the anomaly field is strongest, planetary buildings have evolved legs and transformed themselves into sentinel constructs that roam across the landscape. Interesting change there. Again, more variety, more things that I like. And again, I hope we get more and more of this going forward. Aquatic landing jets. Here's a great update that I didn't know that I wanted. New technology allows starships to land directly on the surface of water, enabling travelers to dive directly into the sea from the nose of their ships. Starships may also be summoned to the water for a quick escape from the middle of the ocean. Great addition. This has been well thought through. Not only can we land on water, which is something that I'm assuming many people wanted, but you can also summon the ship from within the water itself. Excellent Hello Games. Absolutely love this addition to the game. I wonder if this will impact how many people use the Nautilon or not. Let me know down in the comments. Is this going to affect how much you use the Nautilon Exocraft now? We can land our ship on water or not? We're getting some new Skylight base parts, which are quite self-explanatory. We're getting a lot of glass stuff that you can look out in to the skies. Nice little feature to add. Atmospheric variety. Now I've made mention of this throughout other little sections. Planetary atmospheric effects are deeper, richer and more varied with thick snowfall, flakes of ash and ember, heavy rain, worlds of dust and storm crystals all visually enhanced. What a long sentence. But awesome things to be adding. Hopefully again all these things are added to the Nintendo Switch version. Rain is an aspect of the game that I think has needed an update for a while. I liked what I saw in the trailers so hopefully we will be getting this for the Nintendo Switch. We can see some really good examples here in the video that you're seeing on screen. So it actually wasn't in the trailer, it was here that I saw the rain. I really think this is a really good change and hopefully you all do too. Vile Insect Queens. Now I'm very happy to say that these have been added not just for the expedition, but to the game itself. A vile brood of insects has begun to infest planets across the universe. Excellent. As we saw in the trailer, they have armor. We have to take out their armor to then take out this enemy. Really, really interesting that they've added this to the game itself. Again, more enemies. Definitely want more of that. I want more combat in this game. So I'm noticing more enemies, new HUD. Hopefully part two will go even deeper into more combat, more dungeons maybe, stuff like that. And now we get to quality of life. A significant number of quality of life features have been improved throughout the game. The docking tractor beam at the space stations and freighters is now smoother. Hmm, interesting. Reloading can be interrupted to quickly cycle weapon modes. Great little change there because once we went into those animation frames, we couldn't get out of them. Refiners can now be quick filled. Excellent. With an entire stack of items. Core technology can now be instantly repaired from the quick menu. The range of the analysis visor's target sweep has been dramatically improved and much more. Now I'm very interested to see what that much more is. I haven't seen many people talking about that, but I'm definitely interested. What are we getting with that target sweep? Are we going to be getting some of the target sweep functions that we have in Exocraft, but now in our analysis visor? That would be awesome, but we're going to have to wait and see. This one made me smile. Brand new gestures added to the game. Express yourself with four new animated gestures. Browse the quick menu to get poise for action. Ponder the landscape. Fold your arms in readiness or burst into an energetic dance. Love it. Absolutely love it. More personality being added here. More ways to communicate with each other. Obviously, we can't do that on Nintendo Switch. We don't have multiplayer, but nice for other platforms to have these gestures. And also, if we do get multiplayer at some point on Nintendo Switch or potentially the Nintendo Switch successor, nice to have all these things in there from now on. Now, I've skipped a few features to get to this Vile Brood Nexus mission, so it seems like what we're getting in the expedition is being added to the main game. Excellent. I've been asking that for quite a while if you followed the channel for a bit. I'm very happy that Hello Games has chosen to do this and hopefully they do this going forward. What we do in expeditions is welcome in the main game. You've done it already. You've done all the hard work. So why not add it into the single player? I think that's the way it should be. And that's the way it is here. We're getting all those missions in the single player. Another two thumbs up. 
So skipping a few more things so that this video doesn't take absolutely forever to edit and put up online because knowing my luck, the actual update will be out beforehand if I don't hurry this up a little bit. So colossal insect trophies have been added to the game. As we take out these bosses, I'm assuming we just put these trophies up on the wall. Excellent. Hungering tendril encounters. Now, if you read through that as I'm speaking, you'll notice that it doesn't seem very different to what we already have. So uh, question marks here as to is this new? I'm assuming that it is, otherwise Hello Games wouldn't have put it into their patch notes. But I do like that the detailed combat hub makes a return here for the tendrils. Very nice. So here's a look at the insectoid headwear that we will be getting as we play through the game. I actually think they look uh, uh, one creepy, but two pretty cool. If you like this sort of thing, I think this is up people's alleys. Hunt and destroy insect queens to earn new player titles and harvest a wide variety of wearable insect headpieces. Strike terror into your foes with the broodling skull. Assert your dominance with the brood mothers more or continue the hunt to earn even more. Interesting way of putting that paragraph together, but uh, there we are. More headwear for the game. The Minotaur gets the flamethrower. Now, the flamethrower is something we've been mentioning that was uh, seen within the game files quite a while back. We speculated that this would come to the game as a multi-tool, but no, it's been added to the Minotaur. So uh, that's where that was. I wonder if the player character will ever get this as a multi-tool function. My guess would be probably not. The night sky also gets variety. Nights are more varied than ever with a greater range of sky and lighting colors and darkness levels. Now I find that very interesting because when we use the light, sometimes we don't actually need to unless you're in caves and stuff. So it would be nice to see if these night times are really dark. They might be a little bit scarier to run around and explore and that might add to the overall experience. So as it says from velvety black skies to glowing nightscapes, light levels will also now change over time as the night progresses. Definitely interested to see what that will look like. Blossoming Megaflora. New lush worlds have bloomed into life, discovering idyllic garden planets flourishing with exotic alien flowers, perfect for exploration, discovery, or the construction of a beautiful new base. And this is exactly what I'm going to do as soon as I go in to update 5.0. I'm going to jump into one of my paradise planets and see if it looks anything remotely like that picture. It better do. I love what that planet looks like right there. That's what we want in this game. And that's going to do it for majority of the latest patch notes. Sorry for this long style of video, but you, the viewers, please do let me know. Do you like this form of content slightly longer talking about the patch notes, whatnot, whilst we wait for the update? Let me know down in the comments, like the video. If you don't do that, I won't know if you like it. And if I don't know if you like it, doesn't get a lot of views, then I probably won't make more of these. So it is ultimately up to all of you. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think of the patch notes of update 5.0, The Worlds Part 1? Do you like what they've changed? Do you not like what they've changed? Do you think we're getting all these features on Switch or not? Please let me know down in the comment section and let's have a discussion about it. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you very much again for watching. If you like what I do here, please click that like button down below. Helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to see more, please click that subscribe button as that is the only way this channel can grow. Now, I hope you like this video and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, Thanks again.